Hello, hello, hello. Anybody there? Hello. Yes, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night, good night, good night. Hello, hi. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yeah, great. great. Uh, has anybody done an accounting class before in this group? Yes, sir. Okay. Great. That's can, I be, can you guys hear me clearly? I can hear you. Yes, I have, but I, I, I barely passed it with the C, honestly. That's why I'm here now. Uh, yeah, actually, I can hear you very well. Okay, so first things first. Let me just give you some contact information so that we can get that part of the housekeeping out of the way. I'm just pulling it up here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just trying to get it on the screen so everybody can see it. Right. Okay. Yes, see if you can see my contacts yet. Can you guys see my contacts? No, I can. No, um, so. Okay. When does the share screen thing share screen? Okay. Uh, oh, okay, here we go. Share, can you see it now? Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Okay, great. Well, let me just introduce myself first and foremost. Um, as some of you might know already, my name is Samuel Wilkinson and I shall be your accounting lecturer for the next 12 weeks, I believe it is, all together. And so um, I'd like for you to write down my contact information in the event you need to reach me throughout the semester, you can do so either by email, right there, you can write it down or you can send me a text, give me a call, whatever the situation might be at the time. Feel free to contact me if you have any matters that you need to get cleared up, information on, follow up on, whatever the case might be. Everybody has that information? Yes. Great. Okay, so I can stop share and we can get on with it. Something in the chat. Let me see what's happening. I noticed somebody said no. Uh, Mario, are you there? Yes, sir. You got that information? Oh, yes, I did. Thank you. Okay, great, great. All right, I did, and good evening. Can you put that back up for me, please, just a second? 
Okay, where is, where is that? Share screen. Can you see it? Yes, thank you. I'll write it down right now. Thank you. Okay, no problem at all. Yeah, so I'm, I will be your accounting lecturer for, for the next 12 weeks altogether. Um, as, a, as a background, I've been with the Institute for a very long time from back in the day when they first got started, which was, well, I don't want to date myself, but it was a long time ago. All I can say is more than 25 years and then some. All right, so been with them teaching all kinds of uh, courses from accounting to finance to banking to management to compliance to credit and collections to all kinds of stuff I've done for them these many years. So I'm hoping that qualifies me um, to get you through this semester. Also, let me encourage you guys um, who, I don't know how far you want to go with your accounting, uh, but certainly my suggestion to you would be sometimes students would do accounting one as part of the banking program, for example, and then they don't get back to accounting two, which is the second part of the course until a year or two or three later for some reason. And then they've forgotten all about what debits and credits are or how to make a simple journal entry. I would encourage you guys, if you're doing a banking program or you just plan to do two levels of accounting just for the information to help you in your professional life, that you do part two right after you're done with part one, unless the world is coming to an end or something. That way, you get to do part two while the information is still fresh in your mind and you don't have to start all the way from scratch by doing it a year or two later. Just something I tell students who are doing these things, uh, especially accounting one or two for any particular reason. All right. So before I get into the, the nooks and crannies of the semester, I think what I should do first is just have you guys introduce yourselves to myself and others in the class so that we will know or have some idea of who is in the group and basically who you are. So I'm looking at the, at the class list that they send me. So I'm going to start at the top and then when I get to the end, if you do not hear your name, just let me know so I can add it to this list, please. All right, so why don't we start with Vanessa. Vanessa Bastian, are you there? Hi, yes, I'm here. Hi, Vanessa. Hi. Introduce yourself. Tell us anything you feel like. Well, um, this is my first time taking a course as such. Um, I am excited to learn any and everything that I can, and I definitely will be doing part two. Go, so, uh, Vanessa. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm happy to hear you say you're excited uh, and that you'll definitely be doing part two. And here's the reason. I've been telling people for decades who care to listen, students and professionals alike, you do not have to be an accountant by profession to benefit from accounting knowledge. There are some things in accounting that can be beneficial to all kinds of persons across the length and breadth of life. Yet there's still people who say, I'm not doing it because I don't want to be an accountant. And so way to go, Vanessa. I guarantee you that when you're done with both parts one and two, in the years ahead, you'll be happy that you did. Okay. Perhaps I thank just you. your experience, yes? Yes, thank you. Indeed, indeed. Okay. All right, good stuff. Clinton, are you there? Clinton Clark. 
I'm here. I'm here. Hey, Clinton. How you doing? Oh. I'm good. Um, I'm doing it to uh, help me understand different principles of accounting. Um, to help me along with my um, CFA design, um, the CFA designation I'm trying to get. Oh uh, yeah, then you're definitely in the right place. Um, yeah. It'll help you with your designation and life long after you get your designation for sure. So, yes, sir. So hang in there. Again, I encourage you to do at least one and two. Uh, foundation. Yes, sir. Will do. There's a lot more in the profession of accounting, but for persons who are doing a CFA or like Vanessa, who just wants to find out what the hell's going on to see how she can use it to her benefit, trust me, it will be time and money well spent. Okay. A million years ago, I stood. I, I tell my sons this story all the time, and they're probably tired of the story. A million years ago, I stood on a long line at the old College of the Bahamas, now the University of the Bahamas, where I've taught for over 20 years, by the way, as an adjunct professor, part-time lecturer. But a long time ago, when I was a youngster, uh, I stood on that long line, signing up for my first accounting class with my entire weekly pay of $65, believe it or not, and borrowed money, wondering what the hell am I signing up for this for, to walk the class at night on Soldier Road, uh, to spend four hours in class, to walk home at night, 10 o'clock. So I don't have any car back then. I'm just saying this as a form of encouragement. It was the best decision I ever made, okay? So when you start feeling tired and weary, take a nap and keep going at it. That's all I can say. Okay, thank you very much, Clinton. Mario, Lockhood. Good day. I am a very inquisitive young man on this aspect of my career journey. And to be quite frank, what I plan to get from this, what I plan to do and plan to get to with this, I plan to, make, to be very attentive so that I can master the skill. Now, I know there's a lot of practice that goes in fulfilling that desire of mine, but that's essentially what I'm working towards. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, no pain, no gain. Uh, no matter how you might feel. Um, and I say this for all of you students. Do not give up because it's never over until the fat lady sings. All right, so hang in there. And believe you me, there are always benefits from any aspect of this stuff that you learn along the way. Always. All right, good stuff, uh, Mario. Vanessa. Yes, sir. I didn't see uh, anything under employment. Is that does that mean you're still living off the fat of the land? <laughs> no, I'm a call center rep. Okay, okay, way to go, way yes. to go. Yeah. Okay, well, it's nice to have a call center rep in the Bahamas. I've Every time I call someone now, somebody from India even answers the phone. Oh, or, gosh. Yeah, that's true. India or Trinidad or Jamaica or some other place in the world. Mm -hmm. Can I speak with Fidelity Bank down the road? They say, hold on. And they get the contact and call your phone. I'm like, they're just down the road. Can you just? I'm just being facetious. Uh, because I'm an old school guy, my question is, why do we have call centers around the world to reach businesses in the Bahamas? Don't Bahamians know how to answer the phone? Folks, don't we know? Yes, we do. Well, why isn't the call center here for all of these places? 
nothing personal. Yeah, I wonder the same thing sometimes. It's yeah. hard to get someone, like you said, here locally. Yeah, don't, don't, don't Bahamians need jobs too? Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yes, and can't, aren't we smart enough to learn how to answer their phone and connect it to someone? Of course. What's happening? <laughs> Just want to enlighten you a little bit, nothing personal. Mm -hmm. oh. Any beef with anybody? Can't sure. restriction? Not at all. Okay. Because I'm pretty certain you won't find a Bahamian wherever it is, will you? No. Just a little enlightenment. I know it doesn't seem to be connected to accounting, but it is connected to accounting. Because every time you take it out of the country, then that's resources that could have stayed where? In the country for our what? Credit, correct? Yes. I, my, my. Everything is connected to accounting, as you will discover when you get through this, even this very fundamental course that it's connected to accounting and money in one form or another. All right, way to go, Vanessa. Okay, Danielle, are you there? Danielle Martin. Okay. Not yet. What about Crystal Seymour? Crystal, are you there? I'm here. Hey, Crystal, introduce yourself to us. Okay, I'm Crystal Seymour. I am taking this course. I don't want to say a refresher because I have taken accounting one at the old. UB at the old College of Bahamas years ago. So mm -hmm. I I I do know some what of a basic, I guess, knowledge of um, this course, but I needed to take it again because I am enrolled um, to complete the banking certificate with BIFS. And this is a requirement. Mm -hmm. And I also work in the um, for a commercial bank. So in the delinquency environment, which at times I do need to refresh my memory with debits and credits when I'm preparing tickets and stuff like that, if necessary. Absolutely. So, um, it is a good thing. I've always wanted to do it. I'm not afraid of the accounting aspect of it, even though some persons make it seem like it's, it's, it's challenging, but once you get into it and break it down, I think it'll be okay. And I'm yes. confident in you as our lecturer to help us along the way. Absolutely. So I'm excited. Absolutely. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. Uh, yeah, folks always try to make it seem sometimes as if it's more than it really is. But what it really is, is just a matter of committing and practicing, uh, especially in accounting. And, and I will certainly give you some, some feedback on, on how to do that and how it can be done. Uh, the, the idea is to be present in the classes, to be on top of your reading and any assignments you get to do, just do them diligently. Don't do them as if you're supposed to be some kind of pro overnight. And why is it that God has cursed you with this piece of homework that is keeping you up longer than you'd like to be? Don't look at it that way. Just look at it as a stepping stone to some interesting information that will help you in one form or another. I wonder how I know that. All right, so way to go, Crystal. You're definitely in the right place, for sure. You say you work in credit collections? Uh, I'm working delinquency and recovery. So it's somewhat, yeah, credit and collections, but more so of collections <laughs> um, mm -hmm. than credit, but it's versatile and, and I, I have to sync between the two at times. I'm an executive assistant, so um, you know it's it's the role that I play sometimes allows me to get the training as well as step in, I guess, for knowledge purposes and backup and wonderful. So, yeah. yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, the reason why I ask is because I I have a credit collections class that begins tomorrow night um, through the institute. And so 
I would encourage you when the smoke clears with whatever, that if you work in delinquency, which is connected to lending, delinquency is just the other part of lending. It's the part of lending where the loan has gone bad, in case you didn't know. And so therefore, they uh, the two are related. And so I always tell persons who are in lending and or delinquency that they should do this that kind of course so that you can get some formal information just in case you need it for your current job or who knows, once you get parts one and two and present it to your management, they might promote you as a lending trainee, who knows? Crystal, strange things happen if you do the work and present your position. All right, so good stuff, good stuff. I agree. Okay. Blaine Stubbs, are you there? I'm here. Did I pronounce that correctly, Blaine? Correct, you did. Okay, great, introduce yourself to us. Good night. My name is Blaine Stubbs. Um, I decided to take the course to add to my bachelor's degree in business management. Right. To also help me get you know, a full understanding in the accounting area because I work in an accounting department. So that'll put me in a better chance for promotion. And right. I do plan to take part two. Good. Absolutely. Okay. And if you work in an accounting environment, man, you are exactly where you need to be because now you can learn some formal academic stuff to apply to that day-to-day. -day. And when you put the two together, it becomes a very interesting animal. Right. Plus, you'll be exposed to stuff that you don't do from day-to-day -day, or stuff that you do from day-to-day, -day, but you're not doing it properly or correctly or sufficiently. So now you can go back to your people and say, you know what? I think we need to change this process from this to this you might find some enemies along the way because suddenly you're confident about changing accounting systems on your job and that's okay that's why you get information to help your company and to help yourself and you did happen to use the p word and one way towards promotion is to get information get certification for what you're doing right? for sure all right, yes, way, yes. To way to go. Uh, Denise Thompson, are you there? I'm here. Good night, everyone. Hi, Denise. Uh, my name is Denise Thompson, and I am doing the banking certificate program. Um, oh. There are several other um, certification that I would like to get, and the accounts, doing the second part of the accounts is definitely one of them. Excellent. Um, so I look forward to the class and being able to grasp everything that I can grasp. Absolutely. So, that's yeah. what I'm going to do. do I, I know the feeling. I mean, when I was when I was studying just like you guys, every semester was like a nightmare, like, oh God, new stuff. Uh, and then and, and then certain courses like accounting. And you start to go from the from the foundations to the intermediate and advanced studies. Like, oh my God, what am I doing? But all you really need to do is to apply yourself, read, read, stay on top of your reading, do the homework. Now you'll discover that I don't really mark every piece of homework because when I assign homework, it's really for me to do an assessment of where you are and what we are studying, and also for you to get the practice that you need. Because sometimes uh, you tell students to practice stuff and they say, okay, and they, man, I'm too tired. Work has been long. These children are driving me crazy or whatever the reason is, and you don't get around to practicing. So what I've done is um, allocate a certain percentage of the overall grade for the semester for assignments. And so those of you who actually do the assignments will get credit for them. 
And along the way, while you're doing the assignments, you may have questions about stuff you don't understand. And my hope is that you will ask the question. Questions such that when you ask it, it might even be beneficial to your other colleagues in the room who might have been thinking about the same thing and was stuck and just didn't ask, afraid to ask, whatever the case might be. So uh, that is part of the plan because accounting is one of those courses where it's not like economics where you just learn facts and content. In accounting, you learn facts and content as well. But to be anything good at doing it, you have to practice a bit. Okay? So I will be giving assignments uh, which will carry a percentage of your final grade to encourage you. I don't want to use the word make you. Sounds a little too intense. But to encourage you uh, to practice the material. And the more you practice, the better you will become at understanding. Okay? Do I require you to be perfect in these things? Hell no, no. Do I require you to do the best you can? Absolutely. Should you ask questions if you get stuck? That's the idea. Okay. And as the, at the end of the day, everybody benefits. Okay. All right, so thank you very much, Denise. It sounds good to me. All right, is anybody's name I didn't call? Okay, great. So now that we know who we are, let's get into a little bit of housekeeping. By the way, I, I will send, let me just make sure I have everybody's email address. Yeah, one. I will send a course outline to you sometime this week um, so that you can have an idea of what chapters we'll be covering and some of the material you'll be looking at for this semester. If you don't get the course outlined by Saturday, please send me an email or something and say, excuse me, the course outline. So I can, because sometimes I get tired of a lot of stuff, might not remember right away. Okay, so that you can see um, exactly what you'll be responsible for for this semester. Um, did the Institute tell you how many weeks this program will run for? Is it 14 or? Uh, what made you say 14? I think that's what I read when I registered. <laughs> okay, did anybody else see 14? I did as well. Okay, uh, just making sure that we're all on the same page. If I'm not mistaken, it is 14 weeks. Oh, that sounds like a lifetime, doesn't it? What time goes quickly before you know it, it'll be 14 weeks. Now here's what's going to happen. Uh, two of those weeks uh, will be allocated for your midterm examination and your final examination. So let me say a few words about examinations. Your examinations as accounting students will be, consist of definitions. What is a debit? What's a credit? What's an asset? What's a liability? What's capital? Things like that to make sure you're familiar with those important concepts. Uh, it'll also include what I call short answer questions, uh, which will be a longer form of definition or explanation for certain questions. And then the third part of your examination, which will be the majority or the, the heaviest part of your examination, no doubt, will be what I call problems. So there'll be specific accounting problems that you have to work your way through. Now, I believe that this class is scheduled to run from nine o'clock, sorry, six o'clock to nine o'clock, three hours. And so they've given us a lot of time to mess around with these debits and credits and accounting concepts. Now, I have a tendency 
class to just go on until uh, about maybe 8.30 or so. Um, and generally around that time, since I don't give breaks in between, I might dismiss the class around that time. Sometimes I go to 8.40. If we're having a lot of fun, I may go to 8.45, 8.50. Uh, but somewhere shortly after 8.30, um, generally, I should be dismissing class so you guys can get a break. Now, that doesn't mean if you need to run off to the kitchen to get something to eat, drink something, some water, or whatever else you need to do, you, you shouldn't do that. You can, and then rush right back to the class. That's the beauty of being in the virtual world, okay? as opposed to the traditional classroom. Hmm, interesting. All right. So that is the format that both examinations will take, just definitions, short answers, and problems. Uh, again, a lot of the problems, if not most of them, will be similar to some of the, what I call, homework assignments. So for, for, for you, if you do your homework assignments diligently, when the time comes to do your problems and examination, your life will be far less stressful than if you do not do the homework, okay? The homework is designed to get you to stop for a couple of hours, not necessarily all at once, to practice the information and the concepts that you've learned and to frustrate yourself a little bit until you get the solution, which is pretty much what happens in the real world anyway, all right? So don't worry about it. If you get to any issue in your assignments and you get stuck, don't be stuck for too long. All right. If you form a group or, or whatever, sometimes students form relationships to work together, uh, or if you need to touch base, you need to get something cleared up so that you can move on, please feel free to do that uh, so that you don't get stuck. The other thing I want to mention while I remember students is this. Try not to fall too far behind on your reading. Try to stay ahead on your reading. And when you get assignments, don't wait until the last minute to do that. Like, oh, you only give me two questions. I'll do them the night before class. And then what happens? The night before class, somebody gets sick. You don't feel well. The lights go off. A tornado hits, the, whatever. Some nonsense goes down and you're stuck. Or you're just plain tired and underestimated that this thing is going to take you longer than you thought. So do not wait until the last minute. I usually give my students a week to complete the assignment so you, have, you will have more than enough time. I encourage you therefore to do a little each day and try and be done the night before the night before if possible. Or if you're still doing stuff the night before, you should actually be finishing it up and not getting started. Because if you do that, you will become more frustrated than you need to be. Okay, folks? I see students attempt it all the time and end up frustrated and certainly not doing as well as they could in those assignments. All right, uh, grade allocation, uh, midterm and final will be 40% each of your grade. They will not be cumulative. In other words, when you've had your midterm, that will be it. When you do your final, I will not be asking you uh, questions that you would have been tested on for the midterm. The only interesting thing about accounting is that things like debits and credits and general entries uh, and posting and all that stuff, they travel with you as you move from chapter to chapter. So it's important to make sure you understand them clearly. And even though your final exam is not gonna be cumulative, it doesn't mean that you won't have questions that will involve journal entries, posting and that sort of thing using other accounting concepts. Okay. So you'll see that there's some basic things that you'll need to know, I'll tell you. Uh, that is fundamental to making your life easier for this semester and certainly for accounting too when you get around to doing it. Again, try to do part two as soon as you can okay? so that you don't lose uh, the information and then you have to try to relearn all over again. 
right. Any questions so far? Great. That brings us then to the textbook. Did the Institute tell you what textbook you'll be using? No, sir. Did you say anything about textbooks at all? No, sir, not at all, actually. At least not to me. Hmm. Anybody else? They I said all in the morning. What did they say? I was told in the morning tomorrow. What's in the morning? Tuesday, you'll get the books from the school. Oh, so they do have the books. Yes. Up to the day, they didn't have them as yet. They are hoping a shipment to come in tomorrow. Right, um, that's just told as well. Okay, okay, that's that, that's great. Um, once you get your textbooks, just drop me an email, notice something, and say we have the text. Um, let me just say this initially. Let me just say this initially that. We probably will be covering about 12 chapters for accounting one, between 10 and 12 chapters for accounting one. And then the remaining chapters will, will show up when you do accounting two. So that means if we have 12 weeks excluding today, we can do an average of one to one and a half chapters per week, which is fine. Some chapters are longer than others, so there might be some overlapping and all that stuff, but that's fine. The idea is to get through as much of the syllabus as we can uh, by the time it's time for you to write your midterm and certainly your final examination. If we're doing 12 chapters, then the goal would be after we've done with six chapters, you'll do your midterm, and then after we've done the other six, you do your final and we'll work all of that within the 14 week time frame that has been allocated to us. Okay. So as soon as you get your textbooks, uh, I think it will probably be some version of principles of accounting by Needle, Powers and Kasson. But uh, when you get it, please send me a note and let me know uh, the name of the text, the name of the authors, and the edition, like if it's the 10th edition, the 11th edition, whatever it is, the name of the text, the name of the authors, and the edition. Okay. Just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. All right, uh, let me just show you some of the, let's see if I can share the screen. With you. Give you some idea of some of the topics that you'll be looking at this semester. Okay, share screen. Share screen. Share. Okay, can you guys see that? Yes, sir. Fantastic. Yes. Okay, so basically we'll be doing about, let's see, chapter 10 is current liabilities, mm, long-term assets. Probably we'll stop at chapter 10. Let me see. This, is, this text goes on and on all the way up to chapter 28. So we'll probably be doing uh, maybe 12 chapters, okay? Sorry, just give me a moment. Sounds like Miguel. McGee. No problem.
Uh -huh. Okay. So for, forward it or to that to that email. Okay, forward this link. Right. So so this is an additional student then. No problem, no problem. What what's the name, by the way? It's it's is is it Danielle? Danielle Martin. Okay, okay, great. I'll do that. No problem. Okay, take care. Sorry about that, everybody. Did you guys hear all that blah, blah, blah? That's okay. Okay, let's see. Uh, so yeah, we'll probably finish about 12 chapters. Um, so that means we're looking at an average of maybe one, one and a half chapters per week. But again, that would vary according to you know how we get through through the chapters. Some some weeks we might get through sooner. Um, other weeks we might get um, through a little less because we have to talk about some other things. Folks have some questions that need answered and that sort of thing. Okay. But the plan will be to to at least get since the chapter the book has 26 chapters to at least get halfway which will be about 13 chapters and uh, again i'll confirm all of that in the course outline for you um so that you can you be able to refer to that so going back to chapter one uh you'll see the kinds of things we'll be discussing accounting information and basic financial statements uh business transactions measuring business income on the income statement don't worry if some of this stuff sounds like crappy stuff right now. Trust me, it'll all become clearer eventually. Okay. Uh, we'll be talking about the all important accounting cycle, which is very important in accounting. Financial reporting, very important in accounting. Um, the operating cycle, which is the buying and selling and accounting for goods and services. Uh, the all important internal control function. Uh, what things are in place to make sure that people don't steal money from the company and other assets uh, like inventory items, etc. Uh, then there's going to be a long discussion, not long, but an interesting discussion on company inventories, cash and receivables. Anybody knows what receivables are in this group? Receivables. Money is not owed to you. Yeah, monies that are owed to an individual or company. Okay. Um, any of you guys have any receivables presently in your account? You can't send me something. <laughs> well, the problem with receivables are they don't really uh, help unless the customer comes in or the person pays you what they promise to pay. If you have a receivable, that means you don't have any money yet. And you're not going to have any money until whoever you loan the money to comes in and pays you, whether it's individually or in a company. That's why we call them receivables, because we hope to receive it from people we give credit to. So does that make sense to any, everybody? So if you loan somebody $500 last week and they promise to pay you from the ASU draw in two weeks, then you have a receivable. Will they pay you? Anybody can answer that question. Will they pay you? Hope so. You hope so? Yeah, hope so. Today, yeah, hope so. Welcome to the world of receivables. When you go to the bank to borrow money, for a car, for example, or property, the bank gives you the money to buy the asset, and you promise to pay them over three to five to 10 years, correct? Yes. That means that who has a receivable? You or the bank? The bank. Indeed. So you can see then that accounting is more than just debits and credits. That's the other thing that a lot of people misunderstand. 
they think accounting is just writing up a bunch of debits and credits. I assure you, debits and credits form the foundation of accounting, but it's not the only exciting and useful stuff that goes on in the accounting world, okay? Chapter 11, long-term assets. Well, those are assets like buildings and heavy equipment and vehicles and computers and stuff like that. Stuff that companies use in order to do business. And because they sit there from year to year to year to year until they wear out, we call them long-term assets. Any asset in the company that's older than one year is a long-term asset. Any asset that is one year or less, then it's called current assets. But it's okay. I'm just using these funny words just to kind of warm you up. You will learn them all and eventually they will become second nature depending on how you commit yourself. Uh, chapter 12. Capital, contributed capital. Uh, has anybody ever heard that word capital? Yes. Yes. Where did you hear the word capital? In what context? Mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, I guess, probably along my daily job, I guess. I mean. I, I'm, I'm sure it's probably around your daily job. Uh, a lot of times, we we hear it in our work environment or some other environment, but we don't focus on it because we're not connected to it. Right. We hear it. And here's what information will do. When you finish this course, you will not only hear it anymore. When you hear it, it will now mean something to you. Okay? It's like falling in love. I'm just to use the example so you can remember. When you're watching people fall in love on TV, it's not the same as when you fall in love for real, true or false. Nobody likes to talk about falling in love anymore. That's old fashioned. But <laughs> I feel like such an antique. Man, when I was younger, falling in love was a big thing people like to talk about. I fell in love. Nobody talks about falling in love anymore. Hmm. But it's kind of like that. So you'll see that now you've only heard about contributed capital, but once you've learned what it is, when you hear it again, not only will it mean more to you, but you may have some questions for the person who talks about it. Excuse me, um, about that discussion on capital. Um, can I ask you a question? See, all of a sudden now you could become chappy about it because you now have information. That is the power of learning, okay? And then finally, for our purposes, uh, we have the long-term liabilities. And these are called long-term. Anybody knows what a liability is? Ever heard of it? Those are expenses, expenses on behalf, or expenses that you pay out or you have. Okay, that's, that's getting warm. That's getting warm. I'm glad you use the word expenses because now that you're doing accounting for real, you'll discover that liabilities and expenses are not the same, mm -hmm. even though people use them interchangeably as if they were. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... You haven't even gotten into this stuff yet. And all of a sudden, all kinds of interesting things are already happening. A lot of things that you thought were, you're going to find out that they're not quite that. But now you're going to get the correct information, not just what somebody said, what you heard, or something incorrect that came from some other source. You're going to get it for yourself. So what's the difference between a liability and an expense? Simply this, a liability is an amount that you owe, usually because you borrowed something or got something on credit. That's a liability, okay? When you pay it back, we say that you are reducing your debt. 
That's the language we use for liabilities or money that you owe. On the other hand, expenses in accounting is what we refer to as the cost of doing business. And therein lies the difference. What do we mean by the cost of doing business? Well, if you open up a dress store and you want to make money, what do you have to do to make money? Anyone? If you want to, it. You have to spend it. Absolutely. So, and uh, what kind of money do you have to spend? Well, you have to pay somebody to work in the store if you're not doing it yourself. Typically, you won't be. So you have to pay salaries. What else do you have to pay? Inventory. If you're selling goods, you have to buy inventory. What else do you have to pay? Utilities. Absolutely, or else BEC will turn your light off. They turn your light off even if you pay it up these days. They just keep cutting the light off for any reason anyway. But yeah, utilities, light, water, phone, cable. Can you think of any other costs of doing business? Insurance. Insurance, including NIB. What else? Your suppliers, your vendors. Your vendors. Well, uh, would you pay your vendors? Would it, interesting you should say that. Would normally in accounting not be considered a cost of doing business, even though it, there's a cost involved? So you're going to learn something interesting in accounting about the difference between the cost of doing business and liabilities. When you pay your vendor, you're paying a liability. Why? Because you would have gotten goods from your vendor on credit, correct? If you are borrowing from the vendor, if the vendor says, pay me in 60 days, then is that credit? That's credit. That's credit. Once you get credit, that means you owe. Once you owe, in accounting, there's a word for it. It's called liability. Those other things you mentioned, like salaries and utilities and insurance, they are what we call expenses for the person who used that word. Okay. And so expenses in accounting is simply the cost of generating sales. Expenses in accounting is the cost of generating sales. In other words, if you want to sell something, you have to bear those costs in one form or another to sell. Because without those costs in one form or another, it would be difficult or impossible to generate sales or certainly generate sufficient sales. Okay. So that's the difference between expenses and liabilities. Okay. Uh, let me just say that one of the things I might do now that I'm looking at it is if you look at chapter six, it has two parts. Uh, the operating cycle and then the special purpose journals, I might very well substitute uh, the cash flow statement for the special purpose journals because that particular topic would serve you far better in terms of what you do in your daily lives than the special purpose journals. Okay. Uh, I'll touch on it, but I'll probably substitute it for substitute cash flow statement for the special purpose journal. All right, so I'm not sure if the text that you're getting is this one, but whatever it is, if it's not this one, then they'll have to send me a text, hopefully electronically. Uh, I encourage you guys to not rely on the electronic text. text. Um, get the textbook because the textbook would be, for some people, they read better out of a textbook or they study better out of a textbook rather than online. Plus the textbook allows you to keep a source of reference in case you have a problem at work or elsewhere and you want to go to look at a particular type of transactions now that you are studying accounting, you can just go back to your textbook as a source of reference 
and find out what you're looking for and what you need to do. Okay. All right. So I can stop sharing that now and just ask the class. It didn't, did anybody join the class since we started? I see nine participants, but I only have seven on my list. Yes, I just joined. Oh, Danielle, you joined us. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, Danielle, you're so quiet. <laughs> Danielle, yes, Danielle was sneaking around while we were doing all this stuff. Okay, oh, Danielle, no. uh, now that you are out of the woods, perhaps you would be so kind as to introduce yourself to your lecturer and your colleagues for this semester. Sure. Hi, okay. everybody. My name is Danielle Martin. Um, what else do you want to know? Much more than that. <laughs> I am currently employed at the Teachers Credit Union. Okay. And uh, this is my first semester in BIFS. Well, I started at UB. Now okay. I'm finishing up my degree at BIFS. Okay. And uh, what do you what what do you, you what is your degree at BIFS that you're doing? Accounting. Well, I'm doing the ABA first, and then I'm gonna just um go into the masters. Okay. My, 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 you have a busy future ahead. Yes. So, so that's, that's fine, not a problem. I remember, I don't know when you joined us, but one of the things I was saying is the key to all this stuff is just sticking to your guns. And when you mm -hmm. feel good, go to sleep and get up fresh again and go at it again. Yes, okay. sir. Um, did you hear all of the chit chat that I made about um, doing all your assignments, staying on top of your reading, uh, the semesters, 14 weeks, uh, and all that stuff I gave about the examination, grade allocation. Did you hear all that? Yes, sir. Okay, great, great, great. Um, so, uh, let me just say, since you guys don't have your textbook yet, uh, I am not going to um, burden you with all the great stuff in chapter one and two tonight. Uh, tonight will be the only night that you get out of my accounting class at this hour. Okay? What's the name of the textbook, sir? Um, I'm not sure which one the institute is using. Please contact me okay. tomorrow. I understand the textbooks are expected to be in. Okay. So touch base with Ms. Dean and she will give you the details in terms of when you can collect it, how much it costs, and so on. Okay. okay. Um, so what I would like to say is once you get your textbooks, whether it's tomorrow or the next day, please go ahead and read chapters one and two. Remember to send me the name of the authors, the name of the textbook, and the edition number so that I can see if it matches the one I have or whether or not I need to make some kind of adjustments. Um, with the text that I have, okay? But please, once you get it, go ahead this week and this weekend and read chapters one and two, because when we come back next week, Monday, we will go, we will be going at this thing with a vengeance. Now, what do I mean by vengeance? I simply mean we'll be going at it. When you're reading this stuff, folks, if you don't understand everything, don't panic. Don't don't start drinking alcohol. None of that stuff. Don't nothing like that. Just read it through. Okay. It is not intended that you're supposed to understand it immediately. That is not the goal. Some persons may pick up a few things along the way. That's fine. But if you're reading stuff, you're like, I don't understand what the hell I'm reading. That's okay. That's why we have lectures. That's why we have discussions. That's why we have assignments. So that at the end of the day, when all those things are done, you will be far more enlightened later than you are tonight. Okay. Uh, I did promise to send a course outline. If you can see it in a couple of days, please make an inquiry as to where is the course outline, please. So you can have that to review. And 
Again, more importantly, when you get your text, please read chapters one and two. For some of you who may have demanding jobs, if you don't get through all of two, I'll understand it. Um, but give it a shot because we're going to jump right into this stuff uh, when we come next week. If you have any questions between now and next week's class uh, that is not urgent, that you don't need to get a response to before class, just write them down, raise them in the class. It might be helpful to your colleagues um, when you ask those questions. All right, any questions whatsoever? Uh, let me just say my classes uh, are interactive. And what I mean by that is you don't have to put up your hand to raise a question. If you have a question, you can interrupt me at any time about any question in my class. There's no such thing as a dumb question at all. So please raise them. If you have questions that you feel may not be directly connected to accounting, but you need to ask it anyway because of the because. Feel free to do to, to please raise it because again, it might be helpful to one of your colleagues as well, for sure. Okay. If you have a job situation in accounting or otherwise that you want to get feedback on without calling, without saying it's your job or calling any names, feel free to raise the scenario, get some feedback. Not only would it be helpful to you, but certainly it will be helpful to your colleagues as well to hear about some real life situations and some feedback on how to deal with that. Any questions, anyone whatsoever? Did I leave out anything important? All right, fantastic. Uh, so, uh, having said that, uh, we shall break for this evening, but certainly when we come back next Monday, we will come back to jump into the world of accounting and we'll go straight through uh, to do what we have to do this semester. So until then, you guys, please be safe. I don't want anybody catching anything. I've been ducking COVID from day one. So far, I've been successful. I'm trying to keep my perfect record if I can. And so I encourage you guys to do the same, especially if you're under 30. Anybody in this class under 30? No? Yes, sir. Okay, under 31. Anybody else? Okay. The 31. Only in my mind. <laughs> This one. <laughs> Anybody under 40? Ah, there we go. There we go. Nothing, nobody under 40? Yes. One. So that means everybody else. I'm under 40. I, I'm under 40. I'm under 40. Okay, you're under 40 as well. All right. Yes, sir. The reason why I said under 30 first, because. Oh, I'm under 30. I'm under 30. I, I, I don't put new age on myself. <laughs> okay, you sure you're under 30? I want to tell you, I'm sure, but not 100% sure. Here's why, here's the reason why I ask if you're under 30, because under 30 year olds tend to not want to sit quietly and keep their distance. They like to hang out and in groups doing stuff, whatever that might be. And so sometimes because of that, under 30 year olds tend to pick up stuff and maybe carry it home to grandma or somebody else. So those of you who are under 30, I know you want to have fun. You don't like to be bored and you like to socialize and all that. Please just be careful. That doesn't mean it cannot happen to under 40s, under 50s and under 70s even, it can. Because there's some under 70 year olds who like to socialize too and as well have wine, wine tasting sessions, invite the friends over and have caviar and all whatever it is they do. Whatever it is you do, please be careful, be safe, take the precautions, keep your distance and get back to my class next week in one piece. How's that? 
Sounds good. Understandable. Okay. Ooh, awesome about it. I do have a question. And yes. I guess this is directed to my parents in this class. Yes. So about the book, is it something that they, they is it something that they're gonna organize so that you can pick it up from pick up the hard copy from them directly or they're gonna like send out some sort of code that's via email after receiving payment or something. Uh -huh. And also on these classes, don't you have to pay for these classes? Like I would assume that we would have had to pay something before we get in the class. Or like there's a payment plan or something, but excuse me if my question is very ignorant, but I'm totally oblivious to how this whole process works with this. Uh, no, remember I said, there's no such thing as a dumb question. And that certainly had nowhere near out of order. Um, I believe the textbook will be a hard copy as opposed to an electronic copy. Uh, I believe you will have to go down there and purchase the textbook. Okay. Um, if for some reason you don't have the funding immediately to purchase the textbook, uh, if you are already enrolled in the class as you are, then go down there and make a deal. Tell whomever, Ms. Dean, who's dealing with this, that you don't have all of the money, but you have some of it. Can you make a down payment on your book because you need it to read? And they, I'm almost certain they'll do it, especially if you're already enrolled in the class, okay? In fact, they might even give you the textbook and say, fine, pay us next week or in two weeks or whenever you can pay. Just go down and have a chat with them if that is an issue. But I do believe it's gonna be a hard copy that's going to be available for you. So everybody, please contact with Dean tomorrow, find out if the textbooks are there, and exactly what you need to do to get your copy so that you can get it as soon as possible and start reading those chapters. So that when we come next week, at least you'll be familiar with the information as we go into the lecture. Did I, did I answer your question, Mario? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you for the suggestion, actually. Sorry? I was saying thank you for the suggestion, and yes, it answered my question. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, anybody have, have any other questions that uh, you may wish to ask at this point? All right, fantastic. If you think of anything, you know where to find me. You have my email address. You have my cell number. Uh, if you think of something that is important to you uh, about this class in one form or another, that you cannot wait until next Monday, please feel free to raise that question. Until then, please be safe, get your textbook, read chapters one and two, and come ready to rock and roll in the world of accounting. All right? Yes, sir. All right, so everybody be safe and take care. I'll see you guys on Monday. You too. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.